Today we're talking about season one finale of Apple TV Plus C. The twins finally meet their dad. We're going to talk about the episode, the first season in, in its entirety, my pros, my cons, and let you know what I'm hoping to see in season two. So we're going to talk about that and much more. <laughs> Episode 8, the season finale of C was titled House of Enlightenment. The twins meet their father and discover the truth. What is going on everybody? Elliot back again with my weekly breakdown and review of the latest episode in the finale, season 1 finale of C. And I'm very excited to talk about all spoilers of this episode of the season and what I hope to see in season 2. But before we dive into this spoiler discussion, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that bell so you can stay up to date with all my Apple TV Plus reviews, my other TV reviews, all my movie reviews and everything that we do on this channel. And if and when you've seen this finale, I want to know what you all thought of the episode, your pros, your cons. Let me know what you thought of the season of, of uh, as a whole your pros and cons there your favorite characters your favorite moments your biggest dislikes and let me know in the comments what you hope to see moving forward in this series so let's just jump it off this is going to be a pretty i'm going to try to keep it under 15 minutes or so but i'm going to break it all down from again the episode the season and what i hope to see in the future so let's start off with the recap and the breakdown of the episode it picks up immediately after episode seven where we see the twins uh, at the gates and we see slowly approaching their dad so they meet their dad for the very first time Hannah was couldn't be happier to meet him she's smiling she's happy Kofu is just like looking like okay let's let's see what this is, go what this is about so as they walk through the gates their father tells them you know, over the years, I convert this prison into, into the House of Enlightenment. You know, I have a generator, I have coal, I have water, I have food, I have, you know, uh, all this different stuff. And again, Hannah was just like, oh, yeah, dad. And Kofu's just like, man, let's see what this is all about. So they meet their siblings. I think, I, I can't remember their names. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll probably watch the episode again and, and, and remember their names. Because I would imagine they're going to probably play pivotal characters moving forward. But we they they meet their siblings. The father, you know, shows them the shower and shows them the bed. And everything at this point is very foreign to the twins. You know, again, Hannah was just like, she's at Disney World. She couldn't be happier. But Kofu's definitely the one. And it's been that way the entire season where Hannah Han Hannah was definitely been wanting to move forward and meet their dad and kind of see what the future has for them. And Kofu's just more content. And he should be with his family. The, his, you know, th this is their dad. But we all know Baba Voss is their father. He's taking care of them. He's taught them everything they've known in a sense of survival and things of that nature. Even though... Kofu isn't the most uh, well-versed in, in, in combat, but uh, anyway, he's he's their father. But either way, you know, we see uh, there is that, that kind of... Uh, uh, tension there between Kofu and the dad because again Kofu's not taking all this in there's definitely some some suspicious things going on and, and at that point when he's showing them around I'm just like this isn't right this is something off and we're going to find out more about that later in the episode but uh, we see again the posters that you see the paintings in their room you know Kofu wants to sleep with his sister because again they're not used to having beds this is all foreign to them uh, but one of the things that I'm glad Kofu had mentioned and this is something I was thinking about last week is just like so you just found out your, that your mother your mom died at least you, they think she's dead we all know she isn't and you just let your father go with Paris and, and Bow Lion and Lion is injured and you guys just left I'm glad Kofu approached that and brought that up because that's something I've really been thinking but again Hannah was just like oh you know we, we sacrifice all this we're here now but Again, I'm, I'm so glad Kofu brought that up. So uh, we go back and uh, to the camp. We see the witch hunter tells Magra that their men are definitely going to want Queen Kane out of her, her chair and potentially dead um, and, and want their heads. But as he's saying, I'm just like... And it's coming upon me now, just like these soldiers, I know that they lost their families. They're going to be very upset by that. I completely understand. But hey, guys, the last 20 years, you've been killing people in villages, slaughtering them to find these uh, sighted people. So it's not like karma, but it's just like, guys, you just murdered a bunch of people. And, and as an audience, I'm supposed to... I feel bad that they lost their family, but I'm not that sympathetic with them because they've been murdering people for 20 years straight. But anyway... You know, he tells them that the queen has to give up her reign willingly, and if not, they might have to take some alternative measures. We see, uh, I believe the character's name was Cobra. I might be wrong. Correct me in the comments below. The, the woman that was at the camp and helped out the queen, She, we see her trying to get Boost to switch from, you know, protecting Magra to maybe switching over to Queen Kane, and that's something that was going to play pretty big later in the episode. So we see that play out. Back to the House of Enlightenment, we see the children, the father uh, is showing them around, he shows them a library, and it's finally revealed a little bit more about 
his plan. So he initially tried to find sighted people as we all kind of figured, but he did, he didn't. So what did he do? He just made sighted people. So he slept with all these different women and now we have their siblings. And it'll be interesting to see if there's more children to be discovered as the season two progresses. We know Boots is probably one of his child or definitely is his child. So it'll be interesting to see if we meet more of his children. But you know, it's at that point, Kofu was just like, so you left our mom, you're doing this, that, and the other. And their dad kind of comes back at him and again, uh, reinforces his plans of bringing together this new world and in and, and a, and a world full of uh, sightful people. So uh, they, you know, they have that exchange. And again, they, they meet another, well, they already met this one sibling, but the, the one brother is putting in coal and Kofu's kind of like, you know, as uh, their dad and, and Hannah will walk away. He's like, Hey, this is weird, right? And the brother's like, yeah, give it some time. You'll get used to him. Uh, and then, But before you do so, help me out with this cold. So again, it's just more things building by Kofu, just like something isn't right in this situation. And, and, and he doesn't really want to fit into this world that his dad sees in regards to the sighted people being more, more being higher on an anarchy or being higher on the food chain than the people that can't see. So uh, we, we transition back to Paris and, and Baba Voss where they leave Bow Lion with the... Uh, I believe they were called the Val uh, Valer people or the the village of the Valer. I might be uh, wrong pronouncing that name, but she leaves them there and they say their goodbyes. And I'd imagine Bo Lion will appear back in season two and be stronger than ever. And hopefully she gets more to do in season two because she had, you know, she was a shadow woman and all that stuff, but she really didn't do that much. So I hope that they give her more to do in season two. So back to the House of Enlightenment, uh, we get this group, the Trey Vanas uh, people who we find out later on that that's actually Baba Voss's brother. But he tells them, you know, our agreement was to get the children, but their father says, no, I'll give you just the, the daughter. I'll give you Hanawa. I'm going to keep the boy probably just because he wants, he assumes the boy. Uh, Kofu is, is, a, is, a, is a warrior and we know he's not. Uh, we know that. Personally, Hannah was more, more of a valuable asset in regards to combat and things of that nature, but he decides to give them Hannah instead. And, you know, Kofu overhears that. One of his brothers punches him, and then they, you know, they take Hannah and, and all that stuff. But it's at that point that uh, Paris. Uh, wakes up and tells Baba Voss what happened. So back at the camp, the witch hunter and Magra go to talk to the queen. They they propose to try to, you know, uh, take her out, but change of plans. Boots stabs uh, the witch finder and, you know, Magra is like, what have you done? You're going to get us killed. And that's where the queen says, no, the, that's my army. We're going to tell them what happened and see what kind of goes on from there. Um, and, and, and also, too, in, in that short time, I would say as far as the queen hunter, as I thought he was dead, as the season went on, I mean, the performance by the witch hunter was fine, but it was just like, I wish we would have got more of him revolting against the queen instead of for him being this, you know, the, the, the villain as we thought the whole season. But it's at that point that you think he's dead and the queen comes out and tells, uh, you know, Magra, she's going to tell the, the, the her soldier, soldiers what happened. As we know, it's a lie, but she's going to continue to lie as she's been doing all this season so far. So back to uh, House of Enlightenment, you know, uh, Jer Morel tells Kofu that they've had enough, they have enough now to take out the queen in regards to to building this uh, kind of rapport and building more and more armies to take out the queen. And Kofu hits him in the face. Uh, the You know, their father tells them, okay, take him in the back and kill him. But it's, you know, they take him in the back. And, you know, you think uh, Kofu's going to die, but no, Baba Voss to the rescue. That was a pretty awesome shot, by the way, when he kind of came up. Very slow motion, very badass. And again, uh, Baba Voss is, is an amazing character. I really enjoy that. But he he saves his son, and we see Baba Voss going into the House of Enlightenment with his sword and calling out Jerome Morrell, and that was a pretty badass scene. They have their little fight. You know, at first, uh, Jerome Morrell is winning because obviously he has sight, he has weapons, he has guns. I'm thinking at this time, like, dude, your first thing you should have had was a gun to take him out because Baba Voss is a badass. He eventually does get a, a gun, and, you, and he's winning the fight uh, temporarily, but Kofu goes down to the generator, turns off the lights, and that's where Baba Voss is like, now you're in my world, now let's go, and they, you know, Baba Voss has a little bit of advantage, they're going back and forth, back and forth, they lead their way into the hallway, one of uh, Jermarell's son is going to take out Baba Voss, but Kofu hits him over the head, you know, Baba Voss breaks uh, Jermarell's arm, and then eventually puts his two thumbs in his eyes and makes him blind. He didn't kill him, but now he's blind, so it's very interesting to see what happens with Jermarell now that he's blind, how is he going to adapt to that and so on and so forth we'll talk about that a little bit later in regards to what i hope to see in season two so the queen tells the army about the witch finder the army is um 
is listening to what she has to say, but Magra steps in and says, there's no more witch finders, no more witch hunters, there's no more witches, we're going to go to the role of the lavender and find my children, you know, her and the queen have a little bit of a conversation, and it'll be very interesting to see that dynamic moving forward, so they're on their way to find their kids, we go back to Baba Voss, Paris, and Kofu, they're looking over this kingdom where his brother is, and the last lines of the season is, let's go save your sister, so Overall thoughts, I thought that this season finale was pretty solid. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed the performances. The action was pretty badass. We're learning. We're still building more on the world. It's kind of for those that watch uh, Walking Dead. You know, it took us almost six or seven seasons to find out that there's a bigger world out there. But at the end of this season, we find out there is definitely a bigger world. And we're going to meet more of uh, Baba Voss's brother. Hopefully, we get more of his background and so on and so forth. So, enjoyed this season finale. Let me know what you all thought of the season finale, your pros, your cons. There really wasn't any cons for me other than those things I had mentioned up for, uh, uh, up front in regards to some of the, uh, you know, the minor things. But let me know what you all thought of this episode in particular. But on to my thoughts of the season. As far as positives, I've said it from day one. The action is top notch. The violence, I did not expect the show to be this violent, and it is violent as hell. And it it, it was awesome, all of it. Uh, the all the Baba Vasas fights, all the army fights, I really enjoyed that. The cinematography, the look, the scale of the show was very well done, very ambitious, and they did a good job of bringing that world and world building. They, I think they did a really good job in that. Best performance of the season. My favorite character was easily Baba Voss. I mean, he is such a badass. Again, Jason Momoa, I've been following him for a very long time. It's really cool that he's leading movies, leading shows, and I thought he was just A1 throughout the entire season. And again, I thought that his uh, his fight scenes were top-notch, some of the best action I've seen in a very long time. Magra, at first, I wasn't on board with her, but as the season went on, she became a stronger and stronger character. Uh, the Witchfinder, as I had mentioned in my review, at first, I wasn't on board with him and him being the villain, but as he made that switch, I started to come around to him, and as we know, as the season ended, as I forgot to mention, the camera pans to him and alludes to him. He doesn't open his eyes, but I allude that, I, I assume that he's still alive, and he, we're gonna, he's gonna be in the vengeance in season two for the queen, so I like the Witchfinder and excited to see what happens to him in season two. Uh, I can't, um, Go without uh, saying, as far as the season as a whole, the commitment to the actors being, you know, pl playing uh, people that can't see and being blind, I thought that the commitment was all the way there. It took a little bit to get used to it, but as the season went on, it was just like they really committed to them and, and going into these characters and really did a good job of portraying this world of people that can't see and the action and the way that they handled that I thought was pretty well well, well done. I mentioned uh, the world building again. What What's to come? So as a season... There are some, and let me go into the negatives here before I talk about what I want to see uh, as far as season two, but... Before we get into that, definitely like and share this video. Again, make sure you comment below with all your thoughts and subscribe to my channel. But as far as the cons go with season one, sometimes the dialogue wasn't the best. Uh, there were some characters that I felt were very underdeveloped. I had, I had mentioned in my review, Bo Lion, uh, Boots, uh, Magra at times, the children. You know, there were some underdevelopment things going on from storylines to characters that wish, I hope that they get richer characters and stories as season two comes on. But there were definitely some moments where I thought the acting was a little bit off, especially from the twins at times uh, throughout the season. Decisions that some of the characters made weren't some of the best. Queen Kane, I'm really not a fan of. I love the actress, but I'm just not a fan of how her portrayal of the character and hopefully she kind of has some some different uh switches in her her character arc in season two and then Jeremy morell i thought he was kind of underwhelming he's still alive so we're going to get him in season two but i thought that that whole thing was predictable when they were going to go to their dad that nothing it wasn't going to be right but i wasn't a big fan of how all that kind of played out but hopefully in season two we get more of his story and him being a, you know a bad uh, a, a more of a bad villain and have maybe team up with queen kane who knows but again uh i, I enjoy season one uh again it was wasn't the best season it had some low points but overall i'm pretty satisfied with it and i will be watching season two and give you my review once that drops so what do i want to see for season two as I had mentioned, Jeremy is not dead, so what's that mean for season two? Is he going to continue to build his army? Is he going to be on a vision for Baba Voss? Is he going to change his ways now, now that he can't see? Will his children look at him differently now that he can't see? So very interesting things there with uh, Jeremy Morrell that I'm really interested to see what happens with his character in season two. Uh, what else do we have here? We obviously meet a new tribe, a new world, world building. I'm interested to see how this world continues to grow and also learn more about Baba Voss. Uh, maybe he gets a... a, a 
uh, episode solely focused on his backstory, him as a kid, him and his family dynamic. That will be very interesting to see. We have two queens now, per se. How is that dynamic going to look in season two? And then, of course, when the family does come back together, Magra, Baba Boss, and her kids, how is that dynamic going to look? As well as Boots, you know? Uh, Hannah was said she's going to kill Boots. She made that promise to her mom, and she's going to keep that promise. So things of that nature, I'm very excited to see. Uh, and, and of course, like I said, the witch hunter, he's going to be on the Avengers now. So I'll be excited to see what he does after uh, his queen attempted to kill him. So there you have it. I enjoyed the first season. It had it low. It has its lows, but it also had a lot of positivity. And I enjoyed it for the most part. Excited to see what they have for us in season two. But thank you guys for watching all my reviews for season one of Apple TV Plus C. I will be doing the reviews for season two and can't wait. But in the meantime, check out all my other reviews that I've done for this very platform on Apple TV Plus from the morning show servant we got a new show that uh is starting today truth be told i'm very excited for that so i'll be reviewing that over the weekend as well as the other shows i just mentioned check out all my apple my uh, disney plus reviews for the mandalorian all my movie reviews and everything in between so again i can't thank you all enough for those that watch my c reviews we will be back viewing this show reviewing the show once it comes back on but like i said check out all my other content in the meantime like and share this video, comment below, subscribe to my channel, follow us on all of our social media accounts, keep an eye out for some more reviews I got coming in the next day or so and throughout the weekend. Can't thank you all enough. Thank you for watching this review and we'll see you on the next one.